Hey everybody, Pastor Steven Anderson here from Faithful Word Baptist Church in Tempe, Arizona. This is just a quick video to debunk some of the bizarre claims made by Patrick Boyle in his recent sermon. Let's go ahead and have a listen. And they'll hear me say something like this. If your Greek or Hebrew says something different than the King James, my King James corrects your Greek. Amen. What they think I'm saying is my King James corrects your Greek. But how many understand, we don't have these. Nobody has these. They're gone. Okay, the first thing I want to point out is that he's claiming that the Greek and Hebrew that went into the King James Bible translation is gone and that no one has those documents. And, and that is just wrong because we know exactly what the King James Bible was translated from. In the Old Testament, they used a printed edition of the Masoretic Hebrew text published by Bomberg. And you can buy today a Bomberg Hebrew New Testament. It still exists. It didn't go anywhere. Okay. And then for the New Testament, they're translating from printed editions of the Greek New Testament by Erasmus, Stephanus, Biza. Those are all available. Okay. This isn't like the Book of Mormon where, you know, Joseph Smith translated the Book of Mormon from golden tablets and then those golden tablets were, you know, carried up to heaven or something. This isn't like Mission Impossible, where as soon as they finish translating the New Testament, you know, the original Greek self-destructs or something like that, okay? This is an absurd claim. And not only that, but it's a false doctrine claiming that God did not preserve the text of Scripture in the Hebrew Old Testament, the Greek New Testament. They're claiming that God allowed the Hebrew to basically be preserved up to 1611 so that the King James translators could use it. He allowed the Greek to be preserved, the Greek New Testament, up to 1611, but that then he allowed, after all of those centuries, he just allowed the Greek New Testament to perish off the face of the earth and the Hebrew to perish off the face of the earth so that he points at this weird scroll which is supposed to represent the original languages. It's gone. Nobody has it. We don't know where it is. You know, he's claiming that it's not preserved by God. That's a false doctrine. What I'm saying is my King James corrects your Greek that came along 300 years later. Amen. Now, isn't it interesting when you start to learn a little bit of Greek and you go to the Word of God and you think, huh, open up that King James Bible. Open it up. You know how to do it? <laughs> All right. Wow. This cannot be a literal word for word because this is saying something different than that. And they hold this to the same standard they hold this, never realizing Scrivener didn't believe the King James Bible. So he's creating a straw man here about this 1881 Scrivener Greek New Testament saying, oh, this came, you know, 300 years later. But what he's not telling you is that the Scrivener New Testament is nothing new because all it is is just printing the Greek text that was already printed by guys like Erasmus, Stephanus, and Biza. It's just a new edition of the Textus Receptus in 1881 that is matching the textual choices of the KJV translators perfectly so that instead of pointing to three books, an Erasmus Greek New Testament, a Stephanus Greek New Testament, and a Biza Greek New Testament, we just point to one book and say, here's a Scrivener Greek New Testament, and you know this is the exact Greek uh, underlying the King James. That's all the 1881 Scrivener text is. It's just a synthesis of Erasmus, Stephanus, and Biza. He's just acting like the Greek New Testament came out uh, 300 years after the King James. No, the Greek New Testament, the TR, was out there before the King James, Erasmus, Stephanus, Biza. And guess what? All of those books are still available. None of them self-destructed or was warped up to heaven, but you can actually buy any of those books. You can look at them online. You can look at replicas of first editions from museums. And so homing in on the 1881 Stephanus 
or excuse me, the 1881 Scrivener is a straw man because, you know, that's not what the KJV translators use. They used Erasmus, Stephanus, and Biza. It's just the 1881 is the same text as what they used because it's simply taken from Erasmus, Stephanus, and Biza. But he lies to his congregation and says that Scrivener translated the Bible into Greek. Okay, come on. I mean, that's just so stupid to say, Scrivener translated the English KJV into Greek. That's just a, a lie. And, and the reason I say a lie and not a mistake is because these things have been explained to Patrick Boyle over and over again, and he just refuses to acknowledge the truth, and he has chosen lies. And anyone who says that Scrivener translated the KJV into Greek is either ignorant or lying. And in the case of Patrick Boyle, he's a liar because he's had this explained to him repeatedly. Let's keep going. And he was trying to, if you can't change the King James Bible, change the authority of the King James Bible. And now all of a sudden you're going to say, well, the King James Bible says, God forbid, but the Greek actually says, may it never be. <laughs> so we know dynamic equivalence was used because... The Greek says, may it never be, but our King James says, God forbid. Therefore, we know they're both right. That means God doesn't care about the actual wordage, just the meaning. So notice how he's misleading his congregation here that somehow it's just the 1881 Scrivener Textus Receptus that doesn't say literally word for word, God forbid but actually says something in Greek that literally means, may it never be. Now, God forbid is a great translation of the Greek word, which is mi yenito, okay? Hey, there's no issue there. But the problem is when someone like Patrick Bull gets up and claims that the King James always translates word for word, and that because the original Greek doesn't say like God, like have a word for God and a word for forbid, then he says, oh, that's corrupt. Original Greek's corrupt. Original Hebrew's corrupt. What he's not telling you is that every single Greek New Testament on this planet says me yenito and does not say the Greek equivalent verbatim of God forbid. Okay, so we're not talking about Scrivener. He can mislead his congregation like that, but... And you hear all the amens and all the laughter and all the things coming from the crowd that's just ignorantly eating this up with fork and spoon. But guess what? It isn't true. It's a lie. Because it's not just Scrivener that doesn't say, God forbid, in those exact words. It's every Greek New Testament on the planet. It's millions of Greek New Testaments. If you count all the different copies of it that are all over the world. It's Erasmus. It's Stephanus. It's Biza. And, you know, here, I'm just flashing on the screen for you replicas in museums. Actually, these aren't even replicas. The, these images are taken from actual first editions of the Greek New Testaments published in the 1500s by Erasmus, Stephanus, Biza, as well as other editions of the Textus Receptus that were published later. Folks, it doesn't matter how many we look at. We could look at thousands. They're all going to say the same thing in this verse. So Patrick Boyle's conclusion is that, that, that the Greek no longer exists. So he wants you to believe that every single Greek New Testament on this planet is wrong, that the true Greek New Testament has disappeared from the face of the earth, and that somewhere over the rainbow, there used to be a Greek New Testament that said these exact words verbatim, God forbid. Wouldn't a much simpler explanation be that simply the KJV translators didn't always translate word for word, but that sometimes they use dynamic equivalents? Because that's what they did. That's the reality. That's the truth. And guess what? That's what every good translator does because a word for word translation is a Google Translate translation. And guess what? That's not what the KJV is. The KJV is an excellent translation of the word of God that not only preserves the meaning of the original, but also the power and the majesty and the feel of the original, it comes across in a powerful way because it's not just some wooden Google Translate type translation. It sounds like it was written in English because it's just such a great translation. Anyway, don't be deceived by this garbage. The evidence is right in front of you. 
you know, he can make all these claims without evidence, but here are all the images of all the different uh, Greek New Testaments that are out there. It's not Scrivener. Don't fall for this Scrivener straw man, okay? An attack on Scrivener is an attack on the Textus Receptus in general, Erasmus, Stephanus, Biza, and it's an attack on the preservation of God's word. And it also just makes KJV onlyism completely stupid to anyone who's actually smart enough to think about these things. And so it's it's an embarrassment to the cause of Christ, and it's an embarrassment to King James onlyism. This kind of flat earth level re reality denial. And it's so funny because years later, we, we already had this conversation years ago, and years later, Patrick Boyle is still refusing to deny the reality that the Greek New Testament doesn't verbatim say God forbid, in those exact words. He just refuses to acknowledge it. He just says, I, I, no. Okay, that's a flat earth level of reality denial. God bless you. Have a great day.